And welcome back to Steve's Model Builds. I hope everyone's having a good day. It's actually evening here now, getting dark. Uh, we're expecting some rain tonight, so that'll be nice. So uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to look at the. Uh, we saw this. Uh, we saw this kit before uh, when I uh, talked about various military models and uh, ships and so forth. Uh, it's the uh, 1700 scale Asagawa Waterline Series aircraft carrier Akagi, uh, Japanese aircraft carrier. And so, I had mentioned I was going to work up a ratings system uh, for unboxings, and I've done that. Uh, I, it's a, uh, 10 points. Uh, first is uh, packaging. That's a total of two points, maximum possible. And I'll take a look at the external shipping packaging, the envelope or box that it, that it you know was actually shipped in, uh, the manufacturer's outer box packaging, uh, if the if the box itself was sturdy enough, and so on and so forth, uh, the box art, and the information that's included on the box. Next will be the sprues. Again, that's two points. Are the sprues complete? Are all the parts attached? And we'll also be looking at the flash, molding bubbles, nubs, recesses, anything like that. Third is parts. And that's obviously the parts are very important, so that'll be for three points. We'll look at the quality of plastic, the detail, whether there are any warped or broken parts. And we'll also take a look at the decals, photo etch, and aftermarket parts, if applicable. Last is the instructions. That's three points as well. You can have a, a great kit with uh, detailed parts, but if the instructions are no good, then uh, that's a disaster. So we'll be looking for uh, general service and history notes. If the instructions are clear, if they're in color or black and white, uh, Black and white instructions are fine, but it's always nice to have a, uh, uh, a color insert for painting purposes and any miscellaneous things that happen to come up. So again, that's a total of 10 points. Uh, and again, it's my opinion only. I always try to be fair and unbiased, but awarding and deducting points is subjective. All right, so Hasegawa aircraft carrier Agaki 1700. Uh, right off the bat, we saw this before. Uh, the uh, it was it was sent in an envelope, um, one of those paper envelopes that have uh, bubble wrap inside. Nah, well, I'm afraid that was inadequate. Uh, it took a big hit here, and here's the box. I've already opened the kit to make sure that nothing was severely damaged and everything did look okay, but I haven't gone through it sprue by sprue yet. All right, so as far as the box is concerned, nice box art. Um, on the side here, you get a nice view of the side. view same as the top of the box and they also put a couple of other models on there that are available in the same series pretty standard stuff as far as the information on the box is concerned you got the scale uh, the water of the series if there's a particular series name and manufactured by Hasegawa Objects uh, this kit, it, the design is pretty old, uh, but 
Uh, it was the malls were retooled in 2014, and uh, sorry, uh, this box came out in 2014. The molds were retooled in 2015, and they reissued it with a new box in 2020. So it's pretty up to date. Uh, it doesn't include a difficulty level. To me, it doesn't usually do that uh, on the box. And it doesn't include the number of parts. So again, uh, before you order it, you want to do, do some research and find out if it's going to uh, match your skill level. There is a little note here. It says, modeling skills helpful if under 10 years of age. I expect when we open it up, uh, you'd have to be a pretty good 10 year old uh, to be able to do this. So uh, probably if you're under 12, you probably want to do it with supervision or help. Um, but hey, go for it. It's not an expensive kit, um, but it does have a lot of parts. All right, so take off the top of the box here. Instruction booklet. Decals, lots of great decals. Flags, uh, decals for the flight deck lines, decals for the, the aircraft. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Now, if you're going to display it, there's a nameplate here. So, well, actually, rate. We'll we'll include that in the rating when we do the the parts rating. So, you might notice this looks a little different, <laughs> shall we say, uh, compared to the aircraft carriers we're used to seeing. And the reason for that is, after the First World War, well, leading up to the First World War, there was a huge naval arms race. Uh, all the uh, quote-unquote great powers of Europe uh, they were all they were all racing, building more and more ships to to guard their empires and so forth. That you know the British, the Japanese, the Belgians, uh, uh, the French, the Italians, you know everybody had had big navies, and uh, it was one of the things that led to the uh, to the First World War. Was this great arms race that led up to it? So after the war. And there was a, uh, the United States called a big conference to be held in Washington, D.C. in 1921. Now, the Treaty of Versailles after the First World War, it uh, severely limited, well, <laughs> it, it basically the Axis powers, uh, uh, you know, the Italians, the Germans, the Austrians, uh, basically their navies were scrapped or absorbed into the Allied navies. In the case of the German Navy, uh, after the war, it had been interned at Scapa Flow in, in Britain, north of Scotland, which was the home of the Grand Fleet. And the, uh, the commander there, uh, rather than have all of their, their great battleships and their entire navy fall into the hands of the Allies, he scuttled them. He sunk them all. Right in Scapa Flow. And so, I guess it was a case of, you know, if I can't have them, you're not going to either. So, but yes, following the war, uh, again, they wanted to avoid another arms race, especially since tensions were rising in the Far East. Uh, the United States and, 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 and Japan were um, uh, 
had competing interests in the Far East. Uh, uh, everybody was interested in China um, and wanting to do business there and so on and so forth. Uh, after the Spanish-American War, the United States has, had inherited uh, the colonies uh, or territory of the Philippines and they also had interests in the territories in Guam and elsewhere. Of course the Japanese they, they were interested in expanding their empire so this conference was called and all the great naval powers met and they came came to a treaty in 1921 called the Washington Treaty. Uh, this limited the number of capital ships each fleet could have, capital ships being uh, what in the old days were called ships of the line. Uh, these were the, the biggest and best of all the navies, battleships, aircraft carriers, and so forth. It placed a limit on the displacement, that is how, how big and heavy they could be, and also uh, the type of ships that could be built. So, almost right after the treaty was signed, uh, in the case of the Akagi, uh, because they weren't allowed to build an aircraft carrier, a, a, a really big purpose-built aircraft carrier, what they did was they took destroyer hulls or sorry, uh, battleship hulls that had been under construction at the time and basically put flight decks on top of them. Uh, that's why uh, they look so interesting. So there was the Akagi and the Amagi. They were the first. Others came later. And the Agagi uh, was uh, completed in 1927, served with the Japanese fleet for eight years. Then it went, underwent major modifications and refit from October 1935 to August 1938. Had a larger flight deck, three aircraft elevators, and became the flagship of Admiral Nagumo participated in the Pearl Harbor attack on December 8th, 1941. That's the Japanese date in the USA. That, that kind of was you know, a day ahead. And as we know from history, uh, great damage was done uh, to the American fleet. Many battleships were sunk. Fortunately, most of the aircraft carriers were, uh, were out on maneuvers. Uh, so they they survived. The Akagi also uh, participated in the, the attack on Darwin, Australia. Also participated in the the Battle of Midway. The Akagi was damaged during two airstrikes. Admiral Nagumo's flag was moved to the uh, Nagara, and on June the 6th, the Akagi was sunk by Japanese destroyers with torpedoes. Uh, basic data: displacement 36,500 tons. That's imperial tons, not metric. Uh, it was 260 meters long, 31 meters wide, and its draft, that is the, the distance between the water line and the bottom of the hull, was a little under 9 meters. She was pretty fast. Flank speed was about 31 knots. And she was well armored, armed, and armored. So let's take a look at what we got in the box here. That's it for the history. 
uh, with the waterline series you always get this it's a uh, it's a, it's a piece of metal goes in the bottom I'll show you how that works after and if you wanted to and you did it right all right you could probably actually float this model uh, that's partly what the weight is for okay so For the external packaging, I'm going to have to give it one and a half points. Uh, you know, the paper envelope really wasn't sufficient. It should have been put in an outer box. So that's a quarter point off. And um, the box was the, the, the outer shipping, the, the outer uh, manufacturer's box here. It ended up being damaged. And there's just the basic info as I said you know there's no difficulty level and no no parts numbers or number of parts so uh, those two things another quarter point off so that's one and a half points for the packaging oh along with only one bag no. Um, that may have changed since uh, they reboxed it, but it, it's not great when you have a when you have a kit like this with so many parts, uh, and especially so many small delicate parts as you'll see. Uh, it's it's inviting disaster. I don't know if you can see here. I'll hold it up. Can you see the blistering there? That's where the it went right through the box and the uh, the, sp the screws inside uh, damaged the plastic, the outer plastic. So that's going to be a deduction. We'll figure it out after. All right. So we're going to take a look here. A lot of parts. A lot of screws. This is kind of cool. It gives you the uh, the sprue. They do it by letters. So this is B, and uh, then it says the actual name of the ship. So um, it may be that you don't use all the parts for whatever reason. And if you keep them on the sprues, you can file them away, uh, so that if you need a part for something later, uh, you know which ship it was from and which ship it was which uh, kit it was for. So yeah, here we've got one side of the upper hull. You can see all the port holes. Nice detailing. Nice detailing here at the bow. All that lines and anchor chains and so forth. Not seeing any damage or breakage here. And very little flash. There's a tiny bit, but not much. Next is the other side of the upper hull. Another level of the bow. As you can see, you know, there's, there's like two here. And again, everything's intact. Doesn't look like anything's uh, broken off the sprues. And very little flash. You know, and this is the thing about one bag for all the sprues. You need to be really careful removing them. They can get tangled up and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, so here we go. Here we've got got boats, lifeboats, uh, 
electric boats or just different other types of boats. All the parts are on here. The only thing I see here is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this guy. Maybe if I turn it this way. No, you can't really see it. Anyways, this little gun here, it's, it's, it's bent at the end. Uh, easy enough to fix, but still, it happened. More boats, more guns, more teeny tiny pieces. Again, Flash looks great. And it looks like all the parts are on the screw. Kit comes with two types of aircraft. You may or not, may not want to use them, but you can always use them for something else if you don't use them for this kit. Uh, so, that's nice. Nice to have two different kinds. That's historically correct. Not sure which aircraft they were. Probably uh, Nakajima Kate's torpedo bombers, and I'm not sure about the other ones. They might have been Zeros. Okay, and again on this screw, everything looks okay, even though there's small delicate parts. They're all there. Nothing's bent or broken. Same here. Uh, you know, these are going to be a challenge because if you're not really careful, you know, you can break them when you snip them off the screw or turn them up. But everything looks good here. Getting down to the nitty gritty here. You can see here that's where the metal weight goes. This is the the bottom of the boat or the bottom of the ship again it's the waterline series so there's no no propeller no shafts no rudder it just sits flat again some small delicate parts but uh, nothing everything seems to be intact So the last part here, this is the flight deck, it's not warped, it's attached, there's nice detail, you can't really see but you can, you know, molded in is, uh, you know, the wood planking, again very little sprue, all the parts look to be intact. And the only thing I see here at the end of the bag is this one tiny little, oops. One tiny little part that broke off the screw, but the part itself uh, isn't broken. And Looks like we've got some kind of mast shape or something. I'm not sure what. We'll have to look at that in the instructions. All right then. So uh, for the sprues, I'm going to take off a quarter point uh, for those uh, the one part, the tiny one that came off the sprue, although it wasn't broken, and for that uh, bent gun barrel, quarter point. So that'll be 1.75 for the 
this bruise. Going through the parts, the quality of plastic is good. Just what you'd expect from a Tamiya or a Hasegawa model. Nicely detailed, lots of nice details. Um, again, the warped broken, you know, the one warped part. Actually, yeah, let me change that. So, a uh, quarter point off for the part that was off the sprue under screws and a quarter point off for that warp gun barrel. I already mentioned the, the decals. Everything looks great here. No complaints. And there will be plenty of extras. As I said, always save your extras. You never know when you might need